we Fremen have a saying. God created Arrakis to train the faithful. One cannot go against the word of God. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's Devin Neoji, the original Grognard. Yeah, that kind of works. Still working on it. I should not be really that surprised when games are delayed, when they say that they're going to be released at a certain time, and they sometimes get relayed, delayed up to several months. I am a crummagen, grumpy old man, and typically, generally tend to think the worst about most things, and so if something says it's going to come out by a certain date, the logical part of me, the grumpy curmudgeon part of me, says, yeah, it's going to be a few months. Most of the time, I stick with that. However, there are times I do get a little bit surprised and a little bit persnippity when, and I guess this is really when something I want to come out doesn't come out. We're not going to talk about World of War 85. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, I understand that. That is is all on the printer side. So, <laughs> looking what we got, boys and girls. Dune. Ah, how is this possible? For he is the Quitzax Hotterock. <laughs> I love Dune. I love the book. Well, the first three or four books. Pretty much anything before Chapter House. Uh, the original book itself I read for the first time when I was in junior high. And my introduction to science fiction is what I consider the classical introduction. Asimov, Heinlein, Herbert. Those were the classical introductions to science fiction of my age. And when I was in junior high, I consumed Foundation Trilogy, all of Asimov's work, iRobot, Her Frank Herbert's D The Dune series, um, the Heinlein, Starship Troopers, uh, A Stranger in a Strange Land. That was what science fiction was when I was in junior high. That's really what science fiction was at the time. So, and Dune was always one of my favorites. I loved the story of Paul. It kind of got a little bit wonky and started to go off the rails, in my opinion, with the, uh, well, pretty much everything after the original. But I love Dune. I, and I've shown this before, I still have a copy of my original 79 Dune right there. Problem is, I lost a combat wheel in it years ago, so it's been kind of actually kind of hard for me to play it and not a lot of it, it it's good for people kind of like my tuesday night group who do the amero and euro style games this game actually fits and works with them because it's a multiplayer game and we all like the multiplayer games up there and it's dune and all these guys are you know 35 40 plus and so science fiction to them is dune foundation you know, Heinlein. So this game will go over with them, and I know we're going to be playing this tomorrow, Tuesday night, when I go up to my group. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a quick unboxing. I know you can see my reflection in the plastic on it. Barely see my reflection. Uh, we're going to do a quick unboxing of this tonight because uh, I need to get to the rule book and start reading the rule book because it's probably been, I think I've played it once in 15 years. So I need to re-familiarize myself with the rules for tomorrow because honestly, there's almost no change between the original, the 79 edition of Dune and this edition of Dune. Um, same guys that originally did it for Avalon Hill. Uh, reworked everything. I think they said there was a, like a 3 or a 5% changes in the entire system between the two editions. So we're going to do a quick unboxing. What I do plan on doing and the big highlight of what I want to do is I'm going to compare the two games. I'm going to break down my 79 version. We're going to look at the components, probably not piece by piece, but section by section. And we're going to compare the old with the new. And of course, my thoughts on it. So, <laughs> go ahead and get into it. I have been waiting for this game. Oh, back back to my my point 
that I was making way five minutes ago when I started this. Um, I have been expecting this game in my LGS since like August. And it's kind of funny because it, I, I would, I've been going up there and I've been talking to the owner and it's it's basically become a meme at this point between the two of us. I'll go in, I'll kind of look at him, give him the look, and he'll smile and shake his head. And so, yeah, it's but yeah, it came in. I was actually flying back from Atlanta, and one of my buddies sent me a text. It's in! And I'm thinking, what the hell is he talking about? So I said, what? He goes, Dune, it's in! It's like, oh. And so I had to run up today and grab it. All right, first off, we start off. As Il Duce himself, Dan Pencaldi, over at No Enemies would, here would say, a box and a lid. Because it's not a Ziploc game. We love a box lid. All right, let's take a look. Let's go through this. Quick start guide. We got the Atreides, the Harkonnen, Bene Gesserit, Spacing Guild, Emperor, Freeman, Emperor and Freeman. If you've played the game, if you know anything about Dune, you know who these people are. So let's see. Quick start guide. Uh, layout of the maps, uh, setups for everybody, uh, looks like some basic gameplay, more basic gameplay, more basic gameplay, ooh, combat wheels, the battle wheels. One of the things I think that, that why this game has such longevity to it is is the diplomatic aspect of it there is no just no one diplomatic phase you can wheel and deal at any time you want bar none you can do it it's like if if, if you know if you're if the harkonnens have have a uh, monopoly on espionage and so sometimes they know what cards are coming or who has be who are the traders are and it's like, well, oh, right, now let's go with a better one. Let's go with the Fremen. The Fremen know where the, the sandstorms are going to go. And so they know where it's going to show up and where to keep their people away from. Well, someone could try to buy that information from them for one or two spice at any time. Whereas another person could say, hey, I'll give you three spice not to tell that person where it's at. Um, and and the, the wheeling and dealing can be done literally at any time and i think that's one of the things that makes this game so unique and so fun it, it, it it's a very basic it, i don't want to say basic it's a very simple rule set i mean the rules are yeah, 24 pages i mean when this originally came out in, with avalon hill it rated a 3 out of 10 on avalon hill scale which made it an introductory game because mechanically it's not that that tough it's the diplomacy in it that makes the game so dynamic. Those of you out there who have ever played the game Diplomacy, you understand what I mean. The rules for Diplomacy itself are very, very simple. Four, six pages tops, I think. And everything is done in a very rigid, structured way. It's the diplomacy. It, it's the personal interaction and the diplomacy that makes everything. And Dune has got a lot of that same of feeling as well. So anyways, all right, so we got Roebuck. Factions, 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 factions. Who all the leaders are. The game board. The wheel. Decks of cards. Rules. Yeah, so we don't even get to the actual yeah setup for play on page six. Rules, sequence of play, the storm, spice blows, bidding, revival with the Bene Talaxians. Uh, I mean, you don't have to have read the book to enjoy this game. It just helps a lot. Um, even if you've seen the, the David Lynch movie, I would even see saying, seeing the David Lynch movie would help a lot. Now, granted, there was, there was a lot of <clears throat> times he went off the rails with the movie, but overall, I still think it's a fantastic movie masterpiece like uh you know the, the weirding ways and they tried to make it into this sonic weaponry and you know house of trades never had sonic weaponry in the book it was just benny Gesserit martial arts training so um so yeah little things like that in the book uh so and then yeah so the the basic game itself is six pages really it's six pages 
to play the basic game. And then you got the advanced game. And I love, I've been watching a lot of videos and a lot of people have been saying, oh, this is such a hard game. This is such a, this is such a difficult game. There's a lot to it. Well, there's a lot to it. Yeah, but again, if you think this is a hard and a difficult game, you shouldn't be gaming, in my opinion, because this is not a hard game. Like I said, it was rated a three on the Avalon Hill scale of one to 10. I used to play Avalon Hill 10 games, so I don't consider this a difficult game. But this that that gets into a whole argument and debate on me and the the entire dumbing down of the gaming community. And get, buy me a few drinks and get me drunk, and I'll I'll tell you my whole opinion on that because I don't want to <laughs> upset people. <laughs> so advanced game, advanced karma cards. The thing that I think the thing that makes it so difficult is this is also a lot like Cosmic Encounter. Is that for every rule there's out there, there's a special rule that overrides it. And a lot of the special rules come from the faction rules. So you really got to know your own faction. But that's not hard. That's just rote memorization and, and playing the game a lot. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so advanced rules are like two pages. And then you get into the strategy guide. And then faction player sheets. This is just, yeah. Uh, yeah, just references for the game. Advantages, alliances... Advanced game advantages. Uh, Benny Gesserit, and Spacers. Jome, although technically not Jome. And then, of course, you know, Dune Synopsis. If for some reason you're playing this and have no clue what Dune is, uh, Q&A, some of the Q&A issues of commonly asked questions that have shown up. And then, uh, yeah, optional rules for alliances for how many people there are or different ways to win the game. So, yep, rule book, simple, basic, easy. Ah, see, these are much different than the original. These are the cards that you use to hide a lot of your stuff behind. Just set it up like that. You keep your spice back here. You keep your number of troops back here. Sometimes your lead, or your leaders. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just a little screen. To give you some protection. And, you know, it looks like it goes over some strategy. So that's a little cool thing. So every every faction's got one of those. And so we have Fremen, Elite Kynes, and Spacing Guild, Edric. I have no idea who that is. I don't even think they gave any of the spacers' names in the in the original. Emperor Parasharam IV. And Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. I really do dislike the portrayal that they gave Vladimir Harkonnen uh, in uh, David Lynch's. They turned him into a, <laughs> basically, uh, the, the emperor calls him this, a floating fat man. Uh, they made him into comic relief. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen was a terrifyingly evil genius in the books. Uh, and then, of course, Paul Muad'Dib, Quitsax Hararak, House of Atreides. Uh, the... Father of who would be the God Emperor of Dune. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, these are looking at these nice thick cards. Let's see if we can try to focus on. Uh, there's some nice thick cards. So, uh, just faction. Your startup. Advantages, alliances, advanced game advantages. Yeah, for each faction, what do we got here? Uh, the Fremen. Free revival. Yeah, all your special rules. Your special rules and your rules that break the other rules. That's basically what it comes down to. Advanced game. Yep. And then the Spacing Guild. The Emperor. <laughs> Advantage. You have access to great wealth. <laughs> this is the one I always loved. Whenever another faction pays spice for a treachery card, they pay it to you instead of the spice bank. So yeah, the, uh, the Emperor can make lots of money real quick. Uh, Harkonnen. You excel at treachery. Yes, yes, you do. Uh, Atreides, limited prescience. Yeah, well, that was that was Paul's. Well, he was the Quitsax Haderach. That was that was the thing about Paul's gift being, you know, the the, the male precog, which was what the Bene Gesserits were were trying to through their genetic manipulation. The Bene Gesserits, uh, the the spice melange. Uh, not only was it a consciousness expanding, it was also a metaphysical expanding. And through the use of it, uh, as best as I can describe it, because I'm a poor describer of 
such advanced theoretical things as what exactly Spice did. But Spice allowed females to look back uh, through their bloodlines and relive their, their ancestors' memories. Uh, you didn't want to do that too much because then you run the risk of becoming an abomination where your ancestors' memories uh, become more powerful than your own personality and their memories basically take over. Uh, this actually happens to Paul's sister, uh, Aaliyah, um, in Children of Dune. She's overcome by uh, her uncle Vladimir Harkonnen's memories and she becomes an abomination. He basically takes over and didn't know it and so he was running... Uh, basically running her for the very longest time and he did a whole bunch of things and that messed a bunch of stuff up on Dune and uh, Paul had to come back and a whole bunch of other different stuff. If you haven't read it, go out and read it. And no, I'm not going to say spoilers. Book series has been out for over 40 years. If you don't know the basics of most of Dune, I'm not going to I'm not going to say spoilers. I'm just going to go for it. All right, counter sheets. Lots of different troops. A lot, I will say the right away that these are a lot better than the original Avalon Hill counters, but different counters representing each of the different factions. And these are these are pretty pretty thick. These are pretty thick counter sheets. These are good thick counter sheets. And of course, you know, they're rounded. So hey, you know, corner clip for me. I enjoy that. Uh, spice markers. This is the cash in game. Lots and lots of spice. Again, this really nice thick cardstock. Ooh, the battle wheel. <laughs> uh, yes. And then, of course, leaders. Of course, different as Thufer Wyatt, Brenny Jesuit Sisterhood, Granny Halleck, Lady Jessica, Dr. Yui, Duncan Idaho. I just thought his stats should have been higher. But basically, uh, the battle wheel is whenever you go into a battle, you have your leader. He's got a combat value, plus however many troops that you have in the area that you want to commit to the battle. And basically uses battle wheel as kind of a turning thing. And you put in, it's like, all right, I got eight troops there, but I only want to commit four to the fight. So I, I, I turn the wheel so the force number is four, and then I put the leader, and both people are doing this simultaneously, you know, so you can't see what the other's doing, then simultaneously reveal what you're doing. Whoever has the highest number wins the combat, yada, yada, yada. The problem comes into play is that however many troops you commit to the fight, you're going to lose. So in my previous example, I said I had eight troops there, but if I only had four troops there, committed four troops to the fight, and say I committed Gurney Halleck for a grand total of eight, and my opponent only had six, say he had a leader three and put in three troops, I win the combat, but I lose all four of my troops. Now my opponent would lose however many troops he put into, he committed to the battle as well. But yeah, I committed all my troops, so I lost all my troops in the combat. So I may have won, but I didn't secure the area. So and there's two battle wheels. And like I said, I lost one of my battle wheels decades ago. So it's always been a little bit tough since the battle wheels are so integral to the combat of the game. Uh, here's the uh, Emperor's troops. Bashir, Hasmir, Fenring, and then some more of uh, uh, Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. Okay, look what else we got. Uh, Harkonnen troops, Peter de Vries, Fayette Rautha, the Beast Raban. And then Spacers, and then Fremen, Jameis Stilgar, shout out Mapes, Chani, all very, very recognizable names, and just general, general other counters. You know, whoever ends up being the Quitsex Harak, you know, wherever the the Shahulud pops up, more spice tokens. If you use nukes to destroy the shield wall, you know, the storm that blows around continually. So you need all, that. and again, this is all. Really good thick cardboard. Uh, probably gonna have a hard time. Yeah, it's gonna have a hard time focusing in. Map. Map was never that big. I, you know, I'm kind of torn. I'm not sure if I like this new map compared to the old map. And I think when I break them out side by side, I'll get into the reasons why. But you know, mounted map board. This is you know thick, heavy mounted map board. And, you know, all the, if you've read, again, if you've read the series, Karthig, Arakeen, uh, Siege Tabar, uh, 
And then, of course, you know, polar sink. Because on a, most most of the most of the the, the settled places of uh, Arrakis were at the southern uh, the southern polar, and as you would go towards the equator, then that's when you started to get into the deep desert, uh, where you really well the Fremen lived there, but nobody thought they lived there. So, and then you know you got your storm start, and then you know the different sectors for as the storm moves around. I've been to Tilaxu tanks for the dead, and you can raise that, you can resurrect them. Uh, spice bank, turn marker up there. So, yeah, and then that's what we got. Oh, <laughs> cards. They give the zip locks. Oh, there's the, there's the things to put the, the battle wheels together. So they give us the little things. I hope there's four in there. Yep, there's four in there. Um, so really nice insert for cards and counters and, and troops and all that other stuff. And <laughs> one, two, three, four, six decks of cards. Okay, so treachery cards. These are basically equipment cards. Um, and they they do special things for you in game. So like this, place part of your battle plan, automatically kill opponent's leader regardless of his defense card used, which is really freaking powerful. You make the keep this card if you win the battle. However, if anybody plays a shield card in defense, yeah, everybody who knows Dune knows what happens when a las gun flickers across a shield. Nuke, boom. Both players lose the battle. No spices paid for leaders, and all card play cards played are destroyed. Uh, all forces, leaders, and spice in this battle territory are lost to the Talaxu tanks and spice bank. So a bunch of well, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at some of the cards, some of the treachery cards. Fortunately, these card graphics are a lot better than the original. Uh, last game, Chris Knife. That's a you know weapon. You can kill the leader. Projectile pistols, stunners. You know poisons, different types. Most of these are cards that you're playing combat to kill your opponent, or used in combat to protect your leaders. Poison defenses, cheap heroes. <laughs> they get killed instead of Talaxia Gula. You know the family Tomics. If you got this, you can blow the shield wall, and you know just. Karma cards. Karma cards do something different depending on which faction plays it. But, you know, basically, and they're kind of event cards as well. So there's there's special things that can that can affect. Uh, spice cards. This is where... Oh, come on. I don't want to damage the cards by digging. There we go. Uh, there's spice blows all over the planet each turn and you draw one of these cards and it tells you what zone it's in and how much spice is there and the point is for you to try to send out your troops to capture the zone so you can harvest the spice and you know spice is the most important <laughs> product in the galaxy spices spices spice is your currency so the more spice you have the more currency you have ah trader cards one of the biggest core mechanics of the game at the very beginning of the game, every player draws, I believe, two trader cards. And, you know, it, it's all random. You could end up with leaders of your own faction. You could lead up, end up with leaders from someone else's faction. And the whole point is, and it, if you get your own leaders, then that's good because, you know, you know they're not a trader. But if you grab someone else, like, say, you know, you end up with Berseg, and you're playing as Atreides, and you get into combat, and you put out, and you're, the Emperor player commits Bursig, or your traitor, you can play this, and immediately win the battle and lose nothing. Enemy leader is killed, and you receive its fighting strength and spice. So basically, it, you, you hold on to him, and you don't have to play him immediately. If for some reason you want to hold on to your traitor until later in the game, you can totally do that. There's nothing wrong with you also saying, you know, say, you know, you're playing as the Emperor or the Baron Harkonnen and you got Duncan Idaho as a traitor card. You could say, hey, talk, you could say to the, uh, the Atreides player, hey, I know I've got one of your, one of your people as a traitor of mine. Give me X amount of spice and I'll let you know who it is. Conversely, someone could also then turn around and say, hey, Harkonnen player, I'll give you one extra spice to not tell him who the traitor card is. 
Um, so, you know, again, it, the wheeling and dealing is just basically limited by your imagination. Uh, prediction? Yeah, the Benny Gesserit. The Benny Gesserit special rule. Benny Gesserit's not really combat oriented. They start off with one army on the planet. Everything else is in space. The big thing with the Je Benny Gesserit, and I mean, they can win the game by capturing territory, usually through alliances, but with the Benny Gesserits, and you know their their genetic manipulation, their thing is is that they basically will choose, and these cards will help them do it. Choose one of the factions, and what turn they'll win it on, and they'll do this at the beginning of the game. So they could say on turn five, House Atreides is going to win it. If for some reason House Atreides actually does win the game on turn five, the Bene Gesserit automatically win instead. So it's it's I've never seen the Bene Gesserit pull off a successful prediction. But, you know, it's in there. It's it's possible. It could happen. Uh, sequence play cards. You know, sequence play cards for every player. Storm, Spice, Blow, Chom Charity. Chom Charity. If you don't have any Spice, Chom Charity gives you two Spice. Woo, Bidding, Revival, Shipment Movement, Battle, Spice Harvest, Mintat Pause Phase. Pretty simple. And I'm fairly, that fairly certain there's only six cards in here. One for each player. Oh, come on. Don't need to destroy the cards. So, yeah, just six cards. Player aid cards. Storm. Now, one of the things that the Fremen get to do, remember I told you about special rules and rules that break other rules? Yeah, this is this is another one. Um, the Fremen basically control the storm path. It wasn't that way in the original. I think that's one of the biggest changes. I think... I, I'm going to have to read through the rules. But basically, every turn, the Fremen can decide how far the storm, how many how many sectors around Arrakis the storm will flow. Which is why the Fremen can sit there and it's like, all right, you can either pay me Spice to tell me how many zones you want the storm to move, or you can pay me Spice to find out. It's it, Again, this is this is a very good way for the Fremen to make Spice because they can use this as a bargaining chip. Uh, and then Kutzek Satarak and Alliance cards. Cut. I need to sharpen this thing, I think. Uh, but basically, you know, it tells you when you're aligned with somebody and then, you know, quit sex hider at counter for whoever is running Hustle Trades. Uh, so yeah, like while the Emperor's your ally, he may share his great with you by paying spice directly to spice bake for the revival up to three of your forces for a possible total of six during each phase from the Talaxu tank. So yeah, when you're allied and you can make whatever alliances you want, you get certain abilities or certain benefits from being allied with somebody. So again, another thing players have to keep their eye on. Um, so yeah, it's, there is combat. It's kind of basic and generic with, you know, the use of the battle wheel and how many forces you have in the zone plus a leader, but you know, it can be modified by any defense card or attack card you have. Plus it's also modified by, Oh, there's potential traders out there. And <laughs> so, like I said, the rules themselves, relatively simple, relatively easy. Um, the intricate, the, the interplay is where the difficulty comes into play. And that's difficult because you're dealing with people, not rules. And people can be unpredictable and have their own way of doing things and their own goals. The last time I played this, four or five years ago, I think I was the Fremen and I joined up with, I think it was <laughs> the Harkonnens, to be honest. And we got an alliance win on like turn six or turn seven. Because as soon as we aligned up, uh, the other three players, we only had a five-player game, uh, the other three uh, aligned up too. But one of them was like the Benny Gesserit, so pff, their combat potential was worthless. And then I think one was uh, House of Atreides, and the other was the Spacers. Which, again, 
not really a great combat force. So it may have been three of them, but they didn't equal the two of us. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back into this. I've been looking forward to this game once I heard the reboot was coming. Well, it's not really a reboot, the 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 newest edition. Uh, so yeah, and I'm gonna play this tomorrow. I should probably sit down one of these games. Oh, I bring my I bring my phone with me. I just don't always have my tripod. I should probably record one of our game sessions. Although sometimes some of our game sessions can go three, four hours. I mean, I've got the memory on the card. I can do that. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll take my, maybe I'll take my camera up tomorrow and uh, maybe my tripod and maybe I'll try to record our game. That might actually be kind of fun, just because this is a a, a very heavily player interactive game. So. And now I need to sit down and read the rules tonight just so I know how to tell the guys what to do tomorrow. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll see everybody next time. See ya!